Internships are an amazing opportunity to learn about a business, see how it works, and maybe even line up future employment. Jagex, the developers of RuneScape, on occasion offer internship opportunities. But there's one internship program that they'll never run again. Today's video discusses what happens when you decide to put interns on your content development team. So in the early 2000s, Jagex offered internship style placements with a couple universities. Previously, it had only been used for customer support, which they found a decent amount of success with. Now one of the higher ups for some reason decided that since this works so well, they could do the same program but with content development. Keep in mind this was back in around 2003-2004, so RuneScape was still really in its infancy. RuneScape 2 was right around the corner when these internships began. That year, Jagex decided to have three content developer interns, technically four if you count Ian Gower. Each of them were allowed to make really whatever they wanted. I should probably narrow down exactly what content development means in this scenario. More or less, they come up with a concept and just make it start to finish. So basically, if they wanted to make a quest, they would need to come up with just about everything for it besides the art. This means the story, characters, and most importantly, actually programming it into the game. The interns had the entire art team at their disposal when it came to any graphics they needed. Those of you familiar with RuneScape's engine will know that it runs off of Java, but Jagex has their own in-house language called RuneScript to make it easier to create things for RuneScape. Now, this internship program wasn't just for a semester or a summer. I believe it lasted about a year, so a large portion of their time involved another developer basically babysitting them. The developer had to teach them RuneScript, stick around to make sure they didn't do anything stupid, and finally review their code and fix any issues that they couldn't figure out. But even with all that supervision, a lot still went wrong. Let's take a look at some of these projects, shall we? First up is actually Monkey Madness, one of RuneScape's most beloved quests, created pretty much entirely by an intern. Now the intern that made it was getting a computer science degree and they were teaching him a new fancy way of programming called Object Oriented Programming. For the rest of this video, we're going to refer to it as OOP. Pretty much everything else ever created in RuneScape was not made following the guidelines of OOP. So when the intern finished his quest, it was completely unreadable by really half the company. Not to mention, because the guy was still learning and using an obscure language that wasn't meant for OOP, so many bugs popped up as a result. One of the examples given is during the final boss fight where all the gnomes and the demons spawn in, you were able to teleport out mid-scene before anything spawned, and wherever you teleported to, the gnomes and demon would spawn. So for example, you could spawn all that in the Lumbridge Castle. Another funny one is if you had the monkey guards called on you, you could teleport away and they were spawned wherever you were teleported to. Rather than going for you, they would catch whoever was closest, so you could pretty much send random players off to the jail on Apatol Poisoned, and if they died, they really couldn't get their stuff back. Mod Ash has said that they still have issues with this quest to this day, but also says the developer is a genius for how creative he was at making this quest, as well as the Taiboana Trio quest, not the minigame. Even so, from what I can tell, the guy had a bit of an ego and told Mod Ash at the time to not get his hopes up on being a content developer. Which he was obviously wrong about with the massive amount of content he went on to make for RuneScape and later Old School. Even so, Ash says the intern went on to sell a startup company and is living the life of a multi-millionaire now. Next up, we have Throne of Miscellanea. Honestly, not much wrong with this one. The team absolutely loved it, but considered it to be ultimately useless with how overbalanced the kingdom management reward became. Who would have thought about 15 years later how useful it became for Iron Man mode? Before this quest, the same intern wrote Edgar's Ruse and Troll Stronghold, which both really didn't have many issues, although Troll Stronghold was a bit strange. Overall, seemed like a pretty solid intern. For the next intern's work, we have, I think, the biggest mess of a quest I have ever seen, Desert Treasure. So the guy that developed this quest wanted to make it sort of like four separate quests and one final mini quest. The four parts were Vampire Warrior, Legendary Sword, Troll Rescue, and a final one that Mod Ash couldn't remember in a recent interview. Now Vampire Warrior and Troll Rescue made it into the final version of the quest in some kind of form, but Legendary Sword was basically completely scrapped. In it, you'd have to complete a mission for a talking sword, and at the end, the sword would give himself to you. Anyway, once Desert Treasure was passed off to Quality Assurance, they realized just how much of a mess it was and almost immediately rejected it. At the end of the first part of the quest, the boss you'd have to kill was the NPC that gave you the quest. So essentially, nobody could start the quest after you'd been killed. Next, upon login, the game would check if you had done the quest. 
If not, even if you didn't have the requirements, you would be teleported to the quest starting area. Most of the bosses in the quest were also unbeatable, even with Jmod sheets. Now if all this wasn't bad enough, the thing that actually got him terminated from the internship early was this fun little line. In the bandit camp, in the desert, at one point in the quest, you would talk to one of the bandits, who would say this, and instantly one hit you. Allah, Allah, Zabarak. Yeah, so it's not hard to see why he lost the internship. Anyway, he got terminated, and the art team was pretty unhappy because they had spent a huge amount of time making the assets for this quest. So another mod, Mod James, was told, here's this thing, make a quest out of it. This explains why the quest is so weird. Despite being called Desert Treasure, you spend maybe 10 minutes in the desert. There are random one-off NPC appearances, like a guy living in Drainer Sewer, and the whole collect four diamonds thing that you can do in any order. Our final intern, like I mentioned earlier, is actually Ian Gower, one of the game's original creators. When he was in university, he worked at Jagex as an intern, and more or less developed the entire hunter skill on his own. One thing he ended up telling Mod Ash is that there was a competition as part of the internship program, and whoever won would receive a shiny new laptop. For some reason, the way you won was by writing the most lines of code. As you can expect, this led to some absolutely bloated content with maybe hundreds of lines of unnecessary code. For those curious, the intern that made Monkey Madness actually ended up winning. In the end, Jagex realized it wasn't worth it to have one developer spend five months of their time teaching interns a language that they would never use again, and fixing any mistakes that they made before launch. They figured if they just left that one developer alone, he could make far more content than all of the interns combined. I think the only benefit of this program was that because none of the interns except Ian knew the game, all the content was very new and innovative. Something like Monkey Madness was really groundbreaking at the time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to join my clan chat in-game to share your thoughts about it, or just use the comments below. Regardless of what you do, hopefully I will see you in the next one. Thank you.